Thank you for being here. This is really a unique and amazing opportunity to have all of you in one place um, to discuss a, such an important topic. Um, and hopefully um, we all know that this will result in helping more people. First, I'd like to thank um, all the organizations that are here today. The Baseball Assistance Team, Player Care Foundation, Gridiron Greats, After the Impact Fund, Retired Player Assistance. If anyone knows the unique pressures that professional athletes face when performing in the public eye, playing through the pain and pushing the limits of endurance and strength, it's people like you guys. It's the folks sitting in this room. You know, my vision of the summit started off real simple. You know, it, it was just to introduce each other as clinicians and passionate advocates for retired players, for former players, and see how each organization handles their day-to-day -day caseloads. To date, uh, we've, we've, we've funded um, approximately 15.5 million. Total players that we've assisted, uh, 1,250 plus uh, total funded applications, uh, about 1,550 plus. We are helping on average approximately 230 to 240 players a year. Now, we don't just help the player, we help the family members. Anybody that's having a problem, it could be financial, emotional, psychological, addiction, it could be whatever. Um, so in a short period of time, we've helped over 120 military veterans and athletes in treatment. Um, and over 300 people served by us um, in about a year and a half. People are thinking it's easier to just give up on life than to get treatment, and that's why we're here. We know there's hope. You know, you've done this since you're, Sam, as you said, seven years old, 10 years old, and you now 32 years old, you cut, you've worn a uniform that whole time, right? You have an identity. And so what does it mean when it's cut loose? Not only is your support system gone, I mean the whole support system's gone. So your financial ability, your, your money that's coming in, but your identity's gone. There's a huge amount of loss that happens in that moment. And yet there's nothing on the other side to catch you and to you know, prepare you or to even talk about how you're feeling. Every client that we're treating is different. So he comes up with a customized treatment plan and recommendations, and then he'll pair them with uh, our partners uh, to come up with that, that healing path. With organizations we've been working with, it's, it's so in a box, it's 30 days, it's 40 days, and then what happens? And so we're, we're really focused on the, the um, aftercare program. That's a good amount of time, it's better than no time, but they're not gonna be with us forever. So a big part of my counsel with the patients includes, okay, these are the things that you need to do when you're finished with treatment, when you're finished with the outpatient level of care, you know, six months from now, one year from now. The follow-up is very important because we're talking about both the mental health conditions and we're talking about substance use disorders, which you know, any substance use disorder is considered a chronic disease. What we found is that in treatment, because both of our communities are so regimented, there was not enough individualized treatment or group treatment happening that that's where a lot of those alternative things we wanted implemented into their day. One of my um, main philosophies of managing therapists is I do not mandate any type of um, clinical modality to utilize with clients. I hired specifically different perspectives, right? So therapists who have different perspectives and different strengths in working with clients to have an individualized approach. We offer biofeedback, individual therapy, and I think individual therapy is a big deal when managing pain. Um, chiropractic care, personal training, um, they go to the gym, they have pool time, and that's good for you know certain injuries. Um, and we have meditation and mindfulness, and those that you know obviously have been playing sports, they know how to use visualization, right, to achieve a certain goal. So that's a positive, and that's a strength that I think that the athletes will have, and they we could we actually build off of their strengths. So this could be helpful for them in their treatment. An athlete goes from one family to another family to another family. And what do I mean by that? Well, you have your family of origin. And the athlete may have started playing as a result of pressure from the family or because they were neglected and had nothing else to do and that was an out, or just because it was a healthy family and you know, on they went and it maybe just they went into drugs and alcohol because of a, a genetic factor, but it's usually that, it's not just genetics, it's environment as well. So you, you go from one 
typically dysfunctional family to say another dysfunctional family, which may be high school football, okay, or high school baseball. And already there, again, the ego factor and stuff, and you may be treated a little differently. Once you have put these athletes back together, you need to offer them more. And you don't exactly know what more is, but we do. And we know that these former athletes are entitled to certain benefits, either through their CBA, Social Security, or possibly some other union benefit or personal benefit. What our organization does is work individually with each athlete and their family to get them the benefits to which they're entitled. Uh, just to hear the passion of what you're involved in, and I didn't have any familiarity with, with these organizations really before. You know, maybe I'd seen them a time or two, but you know, I'm very impressed with the dedication and the the programs that you have and uh, it's clearly people are here because of they want to be here and it's a passion about it and it's not uh, you know to to make a dollar or two and and that's that's a refreshing thing to see basically when it, what we do we have an integrated approach at car at our transformations and of course, integration means we're actually combining mainstream medicine with, of course, natural medicine. For those of you not, may, who may not be familiar with it, provides more comprehensive care, like a total care. We're not just treating the symptoms, we're actually treating the actual person, treating the patient from, in all aspects. We want to cover everything that might be you know, bothering them, not just, not just pain, but what's actually causing all that pain. So medication can only do so much. Um, one thing by itself, like if you can't, medicine by itself is not effective, chiropractic by itself is not effective, nutrition by itself is not that effective. But when you bring all of them together, it's amazing what happens. And we have a great medical team here. I love working with Dr. Dowd. <laughs> so we don't always see eye to eye and everything, but, <laughs> but for the most part, we get along very, very well. And <clears throat> it's awesome what we, can, what we can do. Everything I do is based on evidence-based medicine. Heavily backed research with statistical significance as to what is proper, you know, the proper way to do things. So that's essentially what I've incorporated in my protocols for the medical program. This is a very sophisticated disease. It's a very complex disease. It requires sophisticated, complex answers, and that's what we try to provide. So when we look at it, we take kind of take an integrated approach. We say you can't treat addiction by silos, right? There's a lot of modalities out there, but you got to kind of bring them together, and that's really what neuroscience does. It brings everybody together. We're looking at it from the central nervous system in the brain. We're looking at it from the peripheral nervous system. And what a lot of people don't realize, there's an enteric nervous system in your gut. And it's connected by a vagus nerve. And, it, and, and the pathways go bi-directional. So there's really nothing that your brain doesn't know what's going on. All right, so if addiction is a neural behavior disorder, right, then I say all behaviors, thoughts, and attitudes are a direct result of pathways and networks in the brain. And people will say, oh, that's so ridiculous. And I say, no, just because we do not understand how it works does not mean that's not true. Matter of fact, all our internal organs are mapped in this brain. Therefore, to call it an organ is a little bit curious. It's hard to really understand what this thing does, how it does it, why it does it, and how we can make it do it better. I got creative and um, I had nowhere to go. So what I decided to do was go into this, um, this little um, convenience store and I faked a heart attack just so that they would call an emergency vehicle to take me somewhere, somewhere to get me out of the rain and I knew I needed help but that was my only choice at that time. So I went uh, to the hospital um, and told them that I needed, I needed help. 
you know, it can happen, but it's a lot of work. But as a family, you know, I'm passionate about helping the other families because I didn't really have anybody there to say, I've been through my husband disappearing or I've been through the rage and the, you know, promises of quitting and it didn't materialize. And, um, you know, I stuck it out and, and I, I was losing hope at one point and I, I'm, it's hard to admit that. But I thought about what life would be without him. I mean, I, I explained to somebody, it's really difficult to try to explain the feeling of when you pull in your driveway with your kids and you have to make an excuse for them, like go check the mailbox. Meanwhile, it's Sunday, there's no mail in the mailbox, but go check the mailbox so I could run in the house and make sure he was still alive. You don't, you don't really understand it unless you've had to do that. The pressure to perform in a, in a professional profession, whether it be baseball, whether it be basketball, whether it be football, hockey, anything, is so immense. You have so many people depending on you, the fans, uh, in my case, the owners, uh, trainers, your agent. You're riding million dollar horses for a living five days a week. And that pressure, you start losing your identity and who you are. You actually become the job. You actually become what they want you to become. And you will do anything to get back out on the racetrack. You will work through pain. I rode for three days with a broken spiral fractured wrist. I took all kinds of pain medication, amphetamines, alcohol, um, just to be able to perform and not let anybody know I was hurting. Because once you do that, you go to the hospital, you're out for four weeks, you lose ground, you lose business. My first day in the Big Leagues, I was exposed to every drug imaginable my very first day. Not only was it exposed to me, but I was doing it with all the players and the coaches. Every coach that I came up with, I was experiencing and I was doing this with. Sorry to put them out there, but that's how it was. And to this day, thank God, thank you guys. Thank you, Randy, for saving me, man. Taking me out of this, yeah, I mean, I was, Hard headed, stupid, and need to be kicked a few times, but I'll be forever grateful, grateful and in debt to you guys. Thank you for saving my family and me. I have a chance with my little girl. Thank you. I thought about that, and I said, Bobby, you're gonna have to talk to Bat about it. Um, and I know that. You know, his name was going to be put low, you know, and he, they were going to be mad at him. But I said, it, it's, 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 it's better if, if, if you talk to them and, and say and be honest with them that, that actually, you know, let this, you know, we're going to lose our family. We're going to lose everything we have, our life, everything. So we got to do something about it. And for some reason, I didn't even know that Bad had a system that works with addict. And it, it was like, for me, it was, it was a miracle. It was, you know, it was God answering my prayers. You know, these guys come to us and they're broken. You know, they're, they're beat up. They're hopelessly searching for their former selves with no identity, no self-esteem. You know, trying to unsuccessfully navigate through life without their sport, you know. And uh, self-medicating on top of that just to feel normal or to not feel. I believe that addiction is life-threatening. I've been there. I know what it means. Uh, I've suffered through it. I've worked with over 350 professional athletes in my life, and I know the pain that goes through with the family, with uh, the individual, and so on. And I'm hopeful that we can have one rehabilitation center uh, that is lasting and that will continue to help with the programs uh, like we have utilized. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us and your success stories and expertise over the last few days. Thank you for your dedication to being part of this solution. Help is available. It's events like this one involving various groups and experts in recovery that are critical to spreading the current research-based solutions to an even broader audience.